Sub Home Skeleton Smooth Singer 422, and welcome back to Let's Play Trauma Team. Last time we left off, we uh, actually got some testimony from the mother and father of the girl that died, and we found something a little bit interesting. We saw that they had some weird injuries on their face that would suggest that. I don't know. I actually don't know what it would suggest, but it's kind of suspicious that they both have them. And uh, we actually found out that the guy, the homeless guy that found the, um, the body in the first place, he wasn't being too honest in the way that he said that he found it. He, initially, he just told us that his dog found it, but he was actually scavenging the body to find something that he could sell for himself. So, yeah, that's a little bit suspicious, but... We're gonna find out. We're gonna get to the bottom of this mystery. Hopefully I won't make too many more mistakes. As you can see from my limit, we kind of just got started on this case and I'm not doing too well, but we'll see how I do. So, um, I think I gotta use the computer, right? Let's see what we can match up. Uh, okay. Oh, maybe he can look into it. Okay. Cool. Wounds of that severity should definitely show up on their records. Okay, so he's looking into that for me. A blue truck was in an accident at the bridge a month ago. We might be able to find records of it. Sounds like there's something else he needs to look for me. Oh my gosh, are you kidding me? Okay, whatever. Uh... Well, I'm guessing these two go together. Huh. Yes, these two facts do tell us something. It's more than that the person who had found the corpse stole something. There's one more important fact involved with this case, and that is... The information at hand indicates that the victim broke her necklace on purpose, died in the river, is missing an earring, was totally styling. Uh, she's missing an earring. Cause homeboy couldn't find it, the homeless guy. He only found one earring. So where's the other one? earrings was at the scene. Either it came off somewhere, or she was only wearing one all along. I don't know about that. Where could the other earring have gone? Okay. Let's see. Only one of the earrings was found, the other one wasn't at the scene. crime scene, where could it have gone? I don't know. The victim is 23-year-old Veronica Cage. I think I can combine this with the details of what happened. Uh, oh. Well, maybe you can combine it with this? No. Um. Oh, maybe this. Since we now know who she is, this information should be consolidated. Okay. Victim events. 23 years old. She must never have imagined that she would die so young. I wouldn't. Man, 23? What was I doing at 23? Was I in college? Yes, I was. Yep. I'm pretty sure I was in college. I think. I don't sympathize with you, but I'll do my best for your sake. Oh man. Okay. All we know now is the victim was in an auto accident. I should exit and analyze the corpse once more. Say no more. I'm on it.
What can the courts tell us? Hmm, it seems like there isn't any more information I can gain from examining the body. What? Then why would you want me to, unless you want me to examine the effects? What? Okay, that's really weird. They just stonewalled me right there. But they said I should examine the corpse, so I'm kind of confused now. Uh-huh. I don't know. Do these go together? No? Okay. Uh... Oh god, please let me not get stuck again. I don't understand why he can't look in the records of that. Unless he is already. Can he look into this? Maybe this goes together. Man, I really would hate to cut right here. I just started the video, but... Hmm. I'm so confused. I don't accident. I should analyze the corpse once more. But when I try to, it told me that there was nothing else they could find out, right? I mean, I don't think I can find anything else either. I'm really confused. I actually don't know what to do. I'm gonna figure this out, man. Is there anything I can figure out at the crime scene? Yeah, she pretty much stonewalled me. There's nothing I can find here. Unless... no? Well... Alright y'all, I'm gonna have to cut. I'm so sorry. I thought I'd be able to figure it out, but I have no idea, so I'll meet you guys back. Alright guys, we're back. I'm so sorry. I... I had no idea that I was supposed to give that to little guy, but... 
whatever. It is what it is. Okay. Oh, you want to know more about the remains? I'll have them analyze and get back to you. Okay. Well, I guess he could analyze it, but I thought... I don't know. Okay, I didn't know that's what he meant. Um... I think that's it, to be honest. Uh, Dr. Kimishima, we've identified the vehicle from the accident. Good. That's rather quick. For you guys. Hey, come on. We're a national government agency. We'll have the recording from the driver's interview later. He pretty much admits to what we suspected had happened. So, case closed? Easy there. It's too early to relax yet. What do you mean? I mean the culprits. Do you think that just catching the truck driver will solve this case? Doesn't it? Yeah, doesn't it? <laughs> a 23-year-old woman was walking alone in the mountains eight kilometers from home. Okay, I guess that is kind of weird. You think she was just walking the dog? Okay, that does sound odd. So the investigation's not over yet. Indeed. Go look into the parents' hospital records. From the size of those bruises, they would have needed to be treated at a hospital. Got it. What will you be doing, Dr. Kimishima? I'm going to investigate the victim's house. Keep the parents in custody until I'm done. Oh. All right. I'll tell the ones in charge right now. Victim's room. Time of accident. Well, let's hear this testimony. Or, I guess we can't hear the testimony. Okay. Well then... Yeah. Let's head to the victim's room. What is this? Already. These pieces of glass seem to have come from a mirror. Let's see. Ah, the mirror on the dresser's been broken. I wonder what happened to it. Well, not that. It's a dresser, but the mirror is shattered. What happened to it? Let's go through her purse. Okay, I guess we can't go through her purse. Um... I have no idea how I could have found that. Open it. Hmm. Birth control? As I thought. These aren't mints in here. Or they're drugs. Unknown medication has been obtained. These markings seem to indicate that this medication was produced for a pharmacy. I might be able to ask the little guy to find out just what it is. Oh yeah, I play a dot it. Can I like... There we go. Hmm, broken glass, hmm? A reaction to the luminal. It seems there's something here that isn't part of the broken mirror. Uh-oh. It's the same earring that the man who had found the body had stolen. But what would this be doing here? Well, I mean, it is her room. Uh, one of the victim's earrings was found with the broken mirror pieces because... Huh. 
It was hidden behind the mirror. It is made of mirror glass. It was swept up with the glass. It looks like it was swept up with the glass. It's from the mirror universe. Some of these answers, man, are freaking hilarious. Um... It was swept up, I think. I wonder why. Indeed. All the shattered glass was neatly placed in one area. That means that someone had cleaned up the glass shards. They must have swept up the earring along with the glass. Hmm, if that's the case, was the earring with the glass pieces when the mirror was broken? Hmm. In any case, since it reacted with the spray, there must be blood on the scene. We need to have the little guy analyze it and see if it tells us anything. Okay. Alright, she said it. Let's head back to the office. Dr. Kimishima, we've received the interview with the truck driver from the accident. Huh, alright. How did he seem? It's easy to sympathize with him. Sounds like a case of wrong time, wrong place. I see. All right, I'll check the recorder. Oh boy. Please do. I'll transfer it over to you. I need to pay careful attention to his account of what happened before and after the accident. Before and after, okay. What Veronica was doing prior to being hit, and what the driver did afterwards. That's what I should be sure to listen for. Before and after. Okay, well I guess I could do that now so I don't get sidetracked. Look at this guy. Charles Elkins. Man arrested on hit and run charges. He was asked about what happened during and after the accident. Before the accident. Okay. I was damn it, they, they forced me to do it. Whoa. Okay. Why the hell would someone be sleeping in the middle of a mountain road at midnight anyway? That's weird. Someone sleeping in the middle of a mountain road? It's not my fault. It's not my fault. I turned a corner and she was lying on the bridge. She was sleeping on the bridge? This seems a little odd. If this man was telling the truth, then the victim had already collapsed there from the start. It doesn't seem like he was lying, but what in the world does this mean? That's pretty weird. What did you do afterwards, buddy? Buddy, you just couldn't call the police? Wow. This guy's going to jail. <laughs> I mean, if it was just if it was a legit accident and he had called the police as soon as it was as soon as it happened, I doubt he would have gone to jail or anything really would have happened to him if he had like you know, explained it the way he did just now. But now he's screwed. This means that the victim wasn't knocked off the bridge by being struck by a vehicle. Okay. Yeah, we definitely have some testimony now to go off of. See, earring I found blah, 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 blah. Here we go. Earrings. What? Oh my gosh. Only one of these earrings was found. 
You know what? Where could have gone? I know where it went, but you know what? I think I have to have him investigate this. Hey, little guy. I need you to analyze something. Sure. Send it over to me. I see. There's blood on it. The DNA matches the victim as well. Also, this metal fitting seems warped. Could it be worn out from use? Hmm. That doesn't seem to be the case. Look again at the blood stain. The blood stain? It's not on the ornament. It's on the needle part that goes through the ear. Was it ripped out? If there's blood there that matches the victim, then the earring was... Well, that's literally the first thing that I said. But, uh, there was blood on the needle of part of the earring, not the ornament. This shows that it was ripped out of her ear, it was hit by a vehicle, Veronica stabbed herself, it must be someone else's blood. It might have been ripped out. Okay, that's if awfully blood, painful. What could happen that would cause an earring to be torn off? Whoops, I think I skipped something. My bad, y'all. I don't know yet. Still, there must be some connection to everything else here. I think this information may lead us to some more concrete evidence. Like? True. Both of these facts relate to the earrings. The victim was discovered with only one of these earrings. And the other one was discovered in her room with her blood on it. Normally, if someone had an earring torn off to the point that it caused bleeding, they would have to realize that something was wrong. Still, the victim was on a bridge eight kilometers away from her home. Maybe she was drugged up. What this shows is that... Uh, the reason Veronica went to the bridge after having an earring torn out at home was because she forgot about it, she was taken by force, she left it behind on purpose, she did it all the time. I don't think she did that all the time. I'm pretty sure she didn't leave it behind on purpose. She might have been taken by force though. Here we go. Okay. That's right. She didn't leave this room by her own she was probably forced out of here by someone else. That could explain how one of the earrings was left in the room. But why would whoever abducted her leave her on a bridge eight kilometers away? Good question. Uh, I feel like there's a lot of truth that remains to be uncovered. I think so too. Good. Did they find anything new? Um, it looks that way. The report indicates that the fractures to the femurs and skull, they were all posthumous injuries. They happened after she died? So these wounds were inflicted after she died? Yes, that's what the report says. Huh. Okay, victim event has become post-mortem fractures. That's weird. According to the truck driver, the victim was already lying in the road before he had the accident. Well, I guess that would make sense, because the victim was dead, right? Okay, whatever. The driver ran over the victim and threw her body off the bridge. He said the victim had been already lying in the road. Okay, so this got to go together. Hmm. Yes, both these facts relate to the victim. If I were to sum up the driver's account prior to the accident, the victim was... According to the truck driver, before the accident occurred, Veronica had been running in the road, lying on the ground, standing on the edge, crying. Pretty sure she was already lying on the ground since she was dead before the accident occurred, right? Right. The victim had already been collapsed on the road. And after he ran her over, the driver... After running over Veronica's body, the driver then threw the corpse over the bridge, carried the corpse away, contacted the hospital, called the police. He didn't do either of those things because he's a coward. He didn't carry the corpse anywhere he just threw the corpse over the bridge yeah 
us. He threw the victim over the bridge. Wow. Little guy, what's the FBI's opinion about this? He's already admitted to killing her. Why would he lie about that? Indeed. His account coincides with the evidence I had found as well. Hmm. Huh. What evidence? Well, if she had been standing when she was hit by the truck, the fractures to her bones would have indicated a strong impact from one certain direction. In this case, nothing of that sort was observed. I see. What about the shattered skull, then? The skull fractures are consistent with a strong impact to the top of the head. It would be unnatural for it to have been due to a car accident. Right. Considering what happened to the victim, it can be deduced that something else caused that fracture. That is... Oh boy. Veronica's skull was shattered when... She was brought to the bridge. She was drifting down river. She was thrown off the bridge. She was run over by the truck. I am tempted to say that happened... When she was thrown off the bridge? Yes. If she was unconscious when she fell from the bridge, the fracture due to an impact to the top of the skull is understandable. I see. You're right, that does make more sense. Yes. However, that raises questions about the victim herself. Why in the world was this woman so far from home? Good question. And why would she be lying in the middle of a bridge in the mountains at that time of night? Hmm, that's a valid point. I guess there are still some mysteries left unsolved here. Indeed. We'll have to continue investigating in more detail. And for those who weren't keeping score, eight kilometers in miles would be on nearly five miles. Pretty much 4.971 miles. I looked it up. So she was five miles from home, which is kind of far. In the mountains at night? Yeah, that's kind of suspicious. Good, I want to know what happened. Mm, good job. What did you find? Yes, there were records that the parents had been going to a hospital, like you said. Let's see, it looks like they'd started being frequent visitors to the hospital two months ago. Huh. Hmm, how many times is frequent? Oh, we didn't check every detail, but it was several times, ending about a month ago. The hospital staff seemed worried, since many of the injuries seemed to be signs of abuse. What? Hmm. Did they tell the doctors who had been physically assaulting them? No, they didn't. However, some of their injuries were quite severe. The mother seemed to have suffered some visual impediments due to a wound on her eye. I have an idea, but I'm gonna stay silent for now. I see. Further investigation is required to determine who had been abusing them. Wow, okay. We already did all of this? I think so. Anything else we can link up? According to the truck driver, the victim had already been lying in the road. The fracture patterns prove it. Do these match? The victim's femurs were fractured in the accident with the truck. Her skull was shattered when her body was dropped from the bridge. We've confirmed that both those injuries occurred after death. From those facts, it's clear that when the victim was on the bridge... The skull and leg fractures both took place after death. So when the accident occurred, Veronica was... already dead, on the verge of dying, unconscious, very much alive. Well, you know, if I were to guess, and this isn't really much of a guess, they pretty much confirmed that she was already dead. Wow. 
more concrete, solid evidence. Or as uh, Hank would say, rock solid. Yes. Even if she hadn't been run over by the truck, she was already dead. That means that the driver was telling the truth in his interrogation. Then does that mean that she was kidnapped from her room, murdered, and then had her corpse dumped on that bridge? I don't know that just yet. We'll need to investigate a little more. And we will investigate a little more in the next episode. <laughs> We're really starting to link this together. I'm starting to get in my groove when it comes to all this stuff. Um, I have a really, really bad feeling of what I think could have happened, but um, I don't know for sure. I don't know for sure, but I just have a feeling. We're getting really close, guys. I have a feeling that we might end this investigation within the next maybe two episodes I just have a feeling but anyway uh, thank you guys for watching I really appreciate it I hope you guys have a great day slash night and um, adios on skillets <laughs>